In the last 18 hours, I've played every inning of two baseball games and 18 holes of golf. Whose idea was that? I'm tired. So let's do answers to questions from you, number two. Yeah. <laughs> How are you, by the way? How rude. I didn't even ask. Thanks for being here for this. The first question comes from sick one weary 425 who asks, are you now considered famous? Yes, I am considered famous. Uh, this message is from Kayla, Kale Braids. She drew Mr. Davenport for the You Do You single. Uh, she lives on the other side of the ocean, and she wrote to me, Hey Ryan, you're officially famous. I was in a store today with my boyfriend, and he was singing, humming, You Do You, and I was like, are you singing Ryan Lent? And he was like, yeah, that guy has a great voice. <laughs> What's funny is I didn't even tell him about your Spotify or anything. Well, there you go. The answer is yes to that question. Everyone picked up on the sarcasm in that segment, right? I hope so. <laughs> okay. All right, this isn't a question, uh, but Pedro R. says you have to make a video with Rick Beato. Beato. That would be awesome. So... Here's what I think we should do. We have Molly, Maggie, and, and me. So he leaves these really fun, long comments all the time. He uh, mentioned that to Rick, and I think it would be funny if everyone who watches this video mentions that to Rick, because Rick deleted <laughs> Molly, Maggie, and me's comment, and gee, that would just be a good time. So go forth and, and do so. <laughs> all right, Brent Mason sent me a really nice, really long email, the gist of which was... Uh, his friend thinks that he can go one of two ways at his guitar playing, uh, you know, self right now. And, and it is, one, continue to learn other people's songs, or two, write your own stuff. And there's, n there's nothing but one and two, and Brent would like to know what I think uh, about what he should do. Well, here's what I think. You've all heard the saying... The better way, the best way to become a better writer is to read more, right? Well, you certain nothing is created in a vacuum, and I'm sure I have. Maybe you have experience being a better writer when you're in a period when you're reading more. Well, I, I don't think listening to music is quite akin to reading because when you listen, it's it's really passive. But when you read, you have to internalize and visualize, right? And and I think that when you learn to play a song, that's like reading music, and you can't, for instance you know, make a painting without ever learning about how other people made paintings. You can't write a book without ever having read a book before. And I don't think, and like Josh Holm does everything, or Homie, how, how do you say his name, does everything really weird. And as I understand it, that, that's really cool. He's a really unique person. I don't think if you put me in a basement, you know, with, I'm in a basement, with no internet and no access to how other people do, I don't think I'm creative enough to like, come up with my own weird way of doing stuff. Um, the average person, that is to say, which I am the average person, and I, you know, the average person is the average person. Uh, so what I'm saying is, I don't think, Brent, you should stop learning other people's songs and focus on your own stuff. I think when you learn other people's songs, you learn stuff that's cool to do. You can put that in your arsenal, so to speak. And so when you go to write your own songs, you'll have a palette of things to do, right? One of my favorite ways to write a song is to pick one little tiny, teeny thing from a song just in the back left corner of the song and make it a different part of my song and expand on it and, uh, yeah do stuff like that. I like to do that. So no, for God's sake, don't stop learning other people's songs. It's not like you have a bucket that you can fill only so high with guitar stuff. It's unlimited. You can learn as much as you want, and it won't go away, and it'll just make the things that you can do when you're writing your own song all the much more better. So there's my thoughts on that. Listen to, learn uh, as many other people's songs as you possibly can, so you have the most options when you go to write your own song. Which isn't to say that Josh Homey, or Hum, or whatever, uh, w was raised in a basement, but I, I watched in an, in an interview with him, and the gist of which was, I don't remember the exact details, but the takeaway was that he was basically given a guitar and left to his own devices to figure out how to use it, given that there was no internet to attend, no one around him, he knew play the guitar, and he just kind of hacked his own... He, re he invented a new wheel on the guitar. Okay, just clarifying that. Okay, so here's an example. A chorus from one of my songs that's, that's not recorded, um, but will be, uh, is, goes like this. And I stole something from a Pearl Jam song. See if you can recognize it. I don't think you'll be able to. You might be able to. Let me, uh, tell me if you did before I tell you, but...
yeah. So, from, um, uh, what goes wrong? Marker in the sand, right before the chorus when the guitar goes, what goes wrong? But I just added a little thing on the end and put it at the end of the chorus instead of before the chorus. The point is when you learn other people's songs, you build up your mind cyclopedia of all of the possible options because nothing's created in a vacuum. And when a thing comes, you'll usually literally hear the thing that's supposed to come next. If you play your song, you know, from start to wherever you're stuck, uh, if you do it, you'll hear something and it'll probably be something like something you've heard before. And if you didn't, you know, know what it was you were doing when you heard that, well, yeah, so. Learn all the songs you can. It will be great for your songwriting. From Sage Bowman. Okay, quick question. Just because I'm curious, what's your favorite PJ song now? My favorite PJ song always has been and always will be In Hiding. So it's pretty weird that we haven't done an actual video on In Hiding. I, I Even just thinking about it, I know some stuff I got wrong and we got to do that walk-up jazzy thing that Stone does. We're going to do it because I want to know how to play in hiding for real. Find the cobbler's children has no shoes, right? But one thing that I know that I got wrong was um, when it's all... It doesn't go to a C. It goes to a D7, I think. That was just my earballs working one day. Anyways, yeah. Of course, I have ones that are like my favorite, like in the moment to listen to, but in hiding will always be closest to my heart. Yeah. Thanks, Sage. And lastly, from A, M U I A. <laughs> Thank you for the question, A. Uh, hey Ryan, you're a great guitar player. How did you learn to play so well? No mysterious magic potion. I just play a lot of guitar because I've been teaching guitar for 12 or 13 or 14 years or so. I've lost count. But yeah, when you teach guitar for a living, you play a lot of guitar. And when I first started teaching, I knew like nothing. I knew absolutely nothing. But you just have to know one more thing than the person that you're teaching about something and then you can teach it to them. So if you want to get good, great at guitar, um, I wouldn't call myself great. I'd call myself solid, solid. And uh, if you want to get great, then a fast way to do that is find somebody who knows one thing less than you and wants to know more, right? And teach them. Because just like with the reading thing and the writing, when you teach, you have to internalize and understand enough so that you can then spit it out. So once you teach something, I guarantee you'll never forget it. <laughs> something happened up there. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> Thanks for the questions, guys. I, I taught a lot of guitar lessons. I, I calculated roughly uh, on my, and I wrote it down on my site, I think that I taught 30,000 guitar lessons in 10 years. I think it's more like 40,000. I did did some more accurate math, but that's a lot of guitar lessons. That it was, you know, five days a week, like, you know, eight hours a day, all things considered, all the stuff I had to do. And at one point, <clears throat> I was trying to see how many students I could possibly get uh, just to see, and that number was about 116-ish, 113, some, something, something like that. And that was, that was crazy. Kids you see every week, because some of them were band classes, so you could have three or four or five kids in a band class and uh that was a lot to keep track of we're not doing that anymore we're doing this <laughs> this is this is great i loved that i love this it's just it's a great thing to do keep playing the guitar it's good for you thanks for being here guys i hope that was enjoyable helpful even and i will see you next time with more stuff goodbye